that they were searching well, for those facts. I'm wondering, I mean, they it, was it a big aberration or? No, it wasn't a I'd big like to hear. aberration. It was there well, the entire time. They didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to see it. And I will just say it. When people like Mark, us, Nate Silver, even, and I want you guys to think about this at the Times and the Washington Post, people I know and love, I want you to think about this, that when anybody even made the suggestion that Donald Trump could be elected president of the United States, it was their journalistic standards that were questioned. When Mark Halperin suggested that there was a pathway forward for Donald Trump as president of the United States. I won't name names because so many of them are my friends and there's no need to name names now. The time for recrimination is over. But reporters at some of the best newspapers in the world, anchors at some of the best news networks in the world, mocked and ridiculed Mark Alpern. I want you to think about this. They mocked and ridiculed him not for saying that Donald Trump was going to be elected president of the United States. They mocked and ridiculed him for saying there was a slight chance that Donald Trump could be elected president of the United States. Now, if your job, you thought, and Jim Rutenberg did say back in August the New York Times job and journalist's job now was to defeat Donald Trump. That was edit that was the editor of the New York Times confirmed that. If you really think that's your job, think about this. Think about what you did. You were trying to help Hillary Clinton defeat Donald Trump because you thought Donald Trump would be such a malignant cancer on our constitutional republic. But you did two things. The first thing you did is you put liberals and Democrats and independents who thought like you, you put them in a position where they were complacent, where they really did believe, not only in New York, but across the America and the world, that Hillary Clinton had a 98.999% chance of being elected president of the United States. So if that's the case, why do I have to go to the phone banks? Why do I have to knock on doors? Why do I have to go out of my, my house at 7 o'clock at night and get in my car and drive two blocks over and talk to a friend who's wavering and sit down and explain to them why Hillary Clinton would be best for the... I don't need to do that. Why do I have to vote? You've told me. She's got a 98.99% chance of winning or a 90% chance of winning if we're talking about the upshot. Poor Nate Silver got slammed for saying she had a 70% chance of winning. You understand that? That's the first thing you did. The second thing you did, which I think you're beginning to understand now from reading Jim Rutenberg's really good penetrating article, is you completely ignored the world, the elite cluster that you don't know. At a complete blind spot, and you wanted to keep it that way. It was much easier for you to stay in Manhattan and say, you know what, they're only voting for Trump because they're racists and bigots. There's no way he can win because they're all just racists and bigots. Well, if you really do believe that, then you believe that 50 million people in America are racists and bigots. And if you really do believe that, then I, I, I take pity on you. You still don't understand what Michael Moore, yes? What Michael Moore understands. America is hurting. Economically, middle America is hurting. Read J.D. Vance's book if you don't understand what's going on out there. And you don't understand what's going on. And let's face it, I don't understand what's going on out there. But you know what Mark and I did that you didn't do? You know what Mika did that you didn't do? We actually talked to people in middle America. And they told us they were hurting, and they told us why they were voting for Trump. Mark, my God, Mark, you were with Donald Trump's campaign for the last, what, 72, 96 hours? And you saw crowds in Michigan and these other states, Wisconsin, I mean, Minnesota, crowds that you've never seen before. Yeah, sun, Sunday on a circus, we're going to have the, the tour. Mark McKinnon and I covered Donald Trump for the last three days and, and talked to a lot of voters. And I think you hear those voices as we heard all year when we traveled and actually talked to people supporting Trump. 
I, I, you said a lot of things I want to respond to. I just want to say one thing. I love the New York Times. I think it's a great institution. By, by, by the way, can I, but, can yeah. I, I, I need, I need okay. to say this. Yeah. Point of personal privilege, I love the New York Times. And I read it yeah. every day. I've said this time and time again. I have the greatest respect for the reporters over there. I don't know what I'd do. And I know a lot of conservatives are going to, I don't know what I would do without the New yeah. York Times. I, it's how I gauge. It's not just the New York I, Times. I, I agree, but, but I love the look, Washington but, Post. But, no, but look, 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 at the headline. look at the headline of this look story. Look at the headline. Look I, at the headline of this story. This is the day after look at this. a, a surprising sweeping underdog sweeping victory. And their headline is not disaffected Americans have a champion going to the White House or or the country votes for cha fundamental change. The headline's about how disappointed the friends who, of the people who run the New York Times are about what's happened. I mean, it's amazing. Democrats, students, it's amazing and to me that this is the headline of the New York Times. Face the reality of and Trump not picking on this. the Times, but Look it's a this. great this. example. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Right. This is staggering. It really is more. I mean, it's the, it's the, it's the, young, it's the onion. This shows that the editors of the New York Times, who I have the, I do, I have the greatest respect for them. They don't get it. This is this actually is about them. A Saturday Night Live skit. You went to a cocktail party the night before, and you decided to write. Like this. It's, and you know, when, when I thought Trump had a chance to lose, which I did, I thought he had a chance to win it, I said to liberals, he's going to get 42 million votes. 42 million people are going to vote for him. What are they voting for? And the, 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 this is their headline. That's their if newsroom. A, if a Democratic candidate who was thought to, but it said was had a 10% chance of winning by the New York Times had ended up winning and winning red states as Trump won blue states. I don't think that would have been the headline. No. And and I'll just say again, the 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 re, the responsibility of journalists is to not report on their biases. It's to go out and understand the country through the prism of the election and say why are people feeling the way they're feeling? And I just stunned at how people are reacting. By the way, so liberal look filmmaker. At this. I, I, let, let's talk about. Except some I'm not. Stunned. Who did it right? The Boston Globe. There they you did go. it right.